we'll see you back in the URI by from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And, and it, it's it's Sunday morning, and I'm late already. Okay, I'm late already. I wanted to get started by about 9.30. It's 10.15 already. Okay, what's going on? Uh, uh, i got a bunch of videos to record, and I'm doing a live stream tonight. I, uh, uh, the Jewish New Year is on Monday night, which means I'm offline for Monday night, Tuesday uh wednesday up until i don't know uh, about nine in the evening and i'm probably gonna be shagged out by that time bit of shagged bit of shagged out baby <laughs> by that time uh, so i probably won't be online on wednesday so i've got to get a bunch of content ready which i'm this is this is part of that block right i'm doing at least three videos eight maybe four depending on when i run out see this is the first one though so you can see me this is the one i'm the most perky right i should have bought a change of clothes so I mean, you know, uh, 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 I mix it up a bit, but you know what, you know what, what, what why, why, why go to those lakes? Okay, uh, uh, what are we doing here? We are doing a review of Delta and the Bannermen, a, a, uh, oh, I hate to say it, but not a very good story in, on many levels, right? It's not a very good story. This is from the season 24 Blu-ray set, uh, uh, which is awesome. Okay, which is the weird thing about this. The Blu-ray set, the tw season 24 Blu-ray set is absolutely fantastic. I was on the fence uh, whether or not I was going to get it. I am so glad I did, right? So glad, even though Delta and Batman, bless it, and I, I, I will talk about why it's awful. Is awful. It is, it is awful. There's no other way of talking about it to say it. It is awful. Fine. Before we get in it, can you can you hit the like button? Can you hit the share button? Can you hit the subscribe? Oh, well, when I say it's awful, it's not. It, 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 okay, it's forgiving. It's, it's forgivably awful, right? Because they really, uh, uh, um, okay, you know what? This is a, uh, let me let me do the intro bit, then we'll do the view. How about that for an idea? Fine, like, share, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Oh, god, I got so many comments to get to. Listen again, if, if I don't get your comments for a long time this week or next week, this is this is the high holiday season, there's Jewish holidays. All the freaking time over the next three weeks. Uh, I apologize. I just, I'm just not online long enough to be able to do it. I will endeavor to get to 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 everybody. It might I might be late. It might take me about an extra week or so. I really apologize. Okay, genuinely, genuinely apologize. Like, share, subscribe, comment. <laughs> even though I'm, even though I basically just said I'm gonna ignore. I'm not gonna ignore them. Okay, this is what this is what a man wracked with guilt looks like. Okay, I really do feel guilty, but please do comment. <laughs> okay, because I want to know what you think uh, uh, uh and go check out my indiegogo so this is going offline this week uh, the order the print order for the, for the uk at least is going in tomorrow i'm waiting to hear uh, uh if they're gonna uh, uh print my uh, uh us orders as well man inflation's crazy right in uh, these are two graphic novels uh uh the uh, uh, we have biblical Bible stories, eighty crisis, rationalists and ropes. Uh, this is two hundred and forty pages long. Freaking awesome, right? So here's the thing about uh, running an Indiegogo. Thank God this isn't my first, my first crowdsourcing campaign. You got to expect the things to go south. So what what's gone south on this one is I was planning on, on printing in the US and the UK and Canada and uh, uh, Australia. Although I haven't checked the uh, Canadian price, so I might move printing up there. Uh, in 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 the last three months, right? Since I last uh, budgeted everything out. Uh, uh, it it was the same amount to print in a little bit. It was a tiny bit more expensive to print in the UK than the US. Not enough to justify sh printing in the US and shipping to the UK. Now it's about 45% more expensive in the US than it is in the UK. It's freaking crazy. So I, I might be printing everything in, in the UK in the UK and shipping it to uh, 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 the dis uh, John Malin, okay, <laughs> the distributor code. If you're in the US, you know you're going to get a good package. In fact, I'm actually ordering uh, 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 one from John Malin because I just like the Gemini mailer and the whole thing. It, well, that's me for you. Anyway, uh, uh, so you got this book, uh, Biblical. we got this book, uh, um uh, the Imperium, a love letter to Teddy Fancy in the 1960s. I wrote this one. Uh, Dominic Racho did the art. There's a backup strip with by Stefano Cardicelli. Uh, uh, yeah, love, hey, we got James Bond, uh, Doctor Who, Emma Pill, The Monkey in the Space, The Black Slab from 2001. Uh, uh, and uh, this is 120 pages long now. We had a 20 pages. And, of course, you get a whole bunch of extras. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Noble Savages. You have 
for the male gaze cast. Hello, Perry. I, I am gazing at you, and I am male. And I have been doing that ever since you first appeared on screen, approximately wearing this. It's not my fault, okay? It's not. I am a healthy... No, I'm not. I, I used to be a healthy... Well, I wasn't even that healthy when I was a kid. Okay, I am I am a sexually healthy... <laughs> I'm a sexually healthy uh, uh, adult male. And yes, I find this very attractive. So when, when John Nathan Turner squeezed her into uh, spandex, God bless him, God bless him, uh, and put her on screen in front of me as my puberty was uh, uh, just going, going to overdrive. Uh, uh, she got she got trapped in my psyche, bless her, uh, 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 pretty much like this, okay? <laughs> so, you know, you get all these cards, the for the male gaze cards. Uh, uh, oh, my, it's Castle Troy. You've got a bunch of them, and then you get posters. I think I'm giving everybody two posters. Uh, and you know what? I should I, today. Hopefully, I'll get to the time to uh, put an update out saying we're going to print. And let me know which of these posters you like. You know, I'm just giving everybody an extra poster. Why? Because we done well, baby. And we know I, I, that's really. Again, that's the thing I genuinely love about crowdsourcing is that, yeah, my success is your success. We kind of in this together. So if you want it, now's the time. Now's the time. Fine. Uh, and is now the time to watch Delta and the Batman? Well, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. So uh, this is this is essentially um, Andrew Cartmel's second story. So it's really become apparent to me over the last few years that the uh, uh, the producer script editor in the classic series is a basically equal to the showrunner of the current in you know in the current run, even though the current run is is running out of production. I think I think the fit film in the last episode any time now, right? Uh, 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 when I say the last episode, there's no plans for anymore. There's no plans, and they doesn't look like they can tempt anybody in, right? They're trying to get somebody, but it doesn't look like, so. Uh, um, uh, uh, so this is essentially uh, uh, the second episode, uh, the second story, uh, which was kind of like had the direction given to it by Andrew Cartmel. So, so what, where we are in the production right now is uh, John Nathan Turner has been screwed over, over and over and over again. He's been screwed over royally. Uh, uh, he had to tell Colin Baker that he was fired, right? And he said, I'll do it, but you've got to move me to a different job. They said, no problem, Johnny boy. We'll move you to a different job. So he, t he told jo uh, Colin Baker, he said, oh yeah, we just need to watch Doctor Who a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, 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 and, you know, uh, uh, he was just broken, right? He was like, firstly, the betrayal from Eric Saywood. He, he, look, he's a very loyal guy, John Nathan Turner. For all his thoughts, he was a very, very, very loyal person. And he he couldn't stand disloyalty, which is what he felt uh, Eric Saywood's uh, uh, um, interview with uh, Starburst magazine was. You know, and I, I tend to agree with him, quite frankly. Um, so uh, 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 basically, John Nathan Turner was just done at this point. He wasn't really interested in anything. And what I think changed it, and I think really by the time he hit season 25, probably Dragonfire, what I think changed it is like he couldn't help but get excited by it because there was new energy brought in by both Cartmel and uh, Sylvester McCoy. I think, uh, uh, yeah, it's very clear for me watching uh, Paradise Towers and this story. Andrew Cartmel had really no idea what to do with Doctor Who whatsoever. And both these stories are... Uh, um, they're pitched way too young. Uh, uh, this is much more Sarah Jane Adventures, children's TV type fare. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but you feel Sylvester McCoy feeling out his role here. And I think this is the first time you get a real Sylvester talking to uh, when he talks to Gavrick. It just doesn't work because everything else is bad, right? Everything else is just realized so incredibly badly and uh, uh, with with uh, uh, about it. So, anyway, so this is the way I watched it, and I think this is the way to watch it fairly. Uh, I go into the uh, the Blu-ray, and the first thing I watch is Behind the Sofa, because I've seen the story before, and I have my uh, my prejudice. I have my 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 pre uh, 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 yeah my my pre-made uh, um, uh, perceptions of it. Right, I've seen it before. I've had my I've had that first impression. So I, I really wanted to use his box set as an opportunity to go in with an open mind, right? It's really, and I think it, you get a lot more out of it if you do that. So uh, uh, the best way I found to do that is watching Behind the Sofa, which is a great little extra. It's about half an hour long. You have uh, three groups of people watching the story. You have uh, Sylvester, Bonnie Langford, and Sophie Aldred in one group. Uh, you have uh, Peter Davis and Janet Fielding and Sarah Sutton, other who are hilarious. And you also you got uh, Colin Baker and uh, uh, Michael Jason, the Valiard in the third group. 
But Colin Baker, still, he's still like, this should have been my story. He's really, really pissed, okay? He just, it really rankles him. I, I sorry, mate. I, I understand. I understand. Surely you've, you've uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, rehabilitated yourself a little bit with Big Finish. But whatever, whatever. Uh, um... And Michael Jason has taken the piss a little bit. Uh, uh, Sylvester, Bonnie, and uh, Sophie, they're having a great time. They're having a great time. Uh, 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 the voice of truth and reality comes from Peter Davis and Sarah Sutton and Janet Fielding, right? So this story opens up um, with, uh, yeah, the, the best comes first. <laughs> with Delta Man, the first episode is by far the best. Uh, and it opens up with a really very impressive action sequence. With uh, 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 the Bannerman as led by Gavrock, uh, what's his name, played by uh, uh, Don Henderson, but no, known as like uh, known for playing uh, what's it called again, Ball? Was it Bullen Ballman? I can't remember. I can't remember what the name of the show was, but he was big at the time, right? He was really he, he was big casting. In fact, here's the thing, right? So uh, uh, again, uh, uh, Joe Knight sort of had basically checked out. He told Andrew Carmel, "Just go ahead, do what you want, baby. I don't care." And then Andrew Carmel came back with stories. And, John Nathan Turner can't stop being John Nathan Turner. There is no off switch on the John Nathan Turner. You know, he's so, he even at minimum John Nathan Turner, he's very, very John Nathan Turner. So we got a uh, uh, Ken Dodd uh, uh, in in uh, in the first episode, quite good actually. I mean, I think he really, really worked in this. Uh, and also, I kind of like the bonkers madcap you know universe that they're building for Doctor Who. Uh, again, it just doesn't work because they don't know how to create a story uh, uh, that will, that's the same thing in their mind that will be on TV, right? I, they really work it out by uh, 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 season twenty-five. You know, when they go, when they they basically work out stay away from doing sci-fi. <laughs> BBC isn't good at that. Uh, uh, try instead of do like historicals. Like, yeah, that's I guess that's where uh, uh, Ghost Light came from. Uh, uh, Remembrance of the Daleks. Yeah, doing historicals, BBC can do well. And they do do them well, right? And it, then you, you really can, but again, it's a learning curve. Uh, uh, but basically, uh, uh, Andrew Cartmel uh, gave gave the script. Who wrote this one? Michael Cole. Michael Cole's script. I think it's probably his first script. One of his first scripts to uh, John Nathan Turner. He just went ahead and did and filled it with lots of John Nathan Turner casting. So we've got Don, Don Henson, uh, who, generally speaking, is quite good, right? The performance is great. Uh, uh, we have Stubby K uh, and Morgan Dare. Now, Stubby K is a big deal. I don't know if Morgan uh, Dare, whatever his name is, and ne uh, never heard me on. Ken Dodd. Uh, Hugh Lloyd. Hugh Lloyd's a big deal, and he plays this really weird character, which doesn't make sense. So that yeah, see that this is where it really falls down. It's the uh, not the ideas of the script. It's the thinking through of it. Yeah, this yeah again tonally, this is much more close to Sarah Jane Adventures. I wish there was a Rusty Davis on top of it to like script edit it and pull it up on its many many problems. So anyway, it starts off incredible action sequence, and it really is. It looks fantastic. Uh, Gavrock's attacking the Bannerman. I mean, Gavrock and Bannerman attacking uh, the Shimmerer, which is, uh, uh, what's her name? The woman who you never saw again. Belinda uh, Belinda May as Delta. And they're running and there's explosions and the music. It's all good, right? All that is like, wow, okay, I'm up for this. Uh, uh, then it gets weirder, right? As uh, uh, the Doctor and Mel... Bonnie Langford, like his her character is just written so strangely. And she's so normal, right? Here's the thing about Bonnie Langford, which I find a revelation. She's so freaking normal and together, right? She's like, well, they gave me the script. I just did it. What's the picture? Yeah, I just did it. And she did it to the best of her abilities. It's just not a good script for her because they have Mel doing just weird, weird things. Um, so anyway, so they uh, uh, they arrive at this intergalactic toll, uh, uh, toll booth with uh, run by Ken Dodd. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, again, I like the bonkersness of it. Right now, I'm on board for this. I mean, in general, I do think they could probably make a cut-down version of this that's 45 minutes long uh, with new special effects, which will be better. <laughs> be kind of fun, right? Be kind of fun. Uh, um, and so they go. Uh, they win their prize to go to Disneyland in 19... Uh, was it 1959? Uh, uh, the rock and roll years. Again, none of this makes sense, but the bonkers fun of it is fine. Uh, they go with the, uh, these blobby aliens, the purple blobby aliens, the uh, blobby aliens called the Navarinos that that uh, uh, transmute themselves into uh, um, uh, tourists. 
and their their uh, their spaceship is a is a coach, right? So all this stuff is really really fun. Uh, at the same time, we got uh, um, in Wales two um, I think CIA agents, uh, Stubby K and uh, Morgan, whatever his name is, uh, uh, who are trying to track a uh, a satellite that's been launched. Good special effects for that, by the way. The model the model work on that was what I thought was, uh, was excellent. So the satellite that was launched hits the the tour bus and they all crash together uh, uh, and they end up in, in a in a uh, Welsh holiday camp, a Butlins esque Welsh Welsh holiday camp. Again, so far I'm on board. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Uh, um, uh, was it uh, the last of the Shimmer has escaped? Uh, with this tour group, very, very obviously, right? Era's dressed in like 1950s gear. She's dressed uh, uh, in like this all white latex stuff, uh, uh, which with, with that, with, I don't know, it being strangely not very sexy, right? <laughs> you would have thought she's, you know, an attractive blonde woman uh, uh, wearing white spandex. Strangely not very uh, sexy. Uh, uh, she's escaping with a suitcase that we we're later going to find out is a, is a giant egg. Uh, uh, and she go away. So she's uh, chased by Gavrock and the Bannerman. So here's the point where this story goes off the rails a bit. It's when they get uh, when 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 we meet the Bannerman again, uh, and they they kill Ken Dodd <laughs> because like yeah, it doesn't. That's not Doctor Who, and it's a sign that that I think uh, um, uh, Andrew Cumber just didn't know. And I wish he had somebody. I wish he had a Barry Letts there or somebody with him. To bounce these ideas off, because again, essentially, these decisions were were being let go by by John Nathan Turner, and I I really think by season twenty five, John Nathan Turner came back round again, right? Because you feel like yeah, this zest for because he knows he's making something good, and Sylvester McCoy was a piece of great casting. Um, so uh, uh, they so they they're staying in the holiday camp where they regrow a crystal to uh, uh power up the uh, uh um uh, the bus so they can go to disneyland which obviously they're not going to because they can't afford to film in a 1959 disneyland uh, uh but again the box of it is 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 really quite fun um you've got one of the flying pickets remember the flying pickets uh, uh i do if you're from the ages you do uh he's a a bounty hunter he spotted uh delta who clearly stands out like a sore bloody thumb like how anybody didn't spot her is 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 amazing to me uh uh and uh, uh he he signals gavrock uh at the same time uh Mel who's sharing a chalet with with Delta and, it, and they have a weird just weird conversations like Mel can I trust you he said oh I'll tr I'll help anybody in stranger dependable's my middle name like these really weird lines that just sound weird right they just like, if anyone said that in real life they'd be like yeah can I have another chalet this person's gonna obviously gonna you know drug me and eat me while I'm sleeping I, I wouldn't I wouldn't surprise if I wake up strapped to a table Dexter like about to be murdered you know like it seems creepy but hold my beer so anyway so that's the end of episode one episode one weren't one, one bad okay I'm in on board for the energy of it, right? So then, episode two, uh, 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 the egg hatches. Uh, I think in the cliffhanger, the egg, egg hatches, and Mel's like, ah! And even Mel, even Bonnie Langford, when she's watching it in, on uh, uh, behind the sofa, she's like, "What? Why is Mel screaming? <laughs> it's, it's a baby! Like, what's wrong with her?" Um, so uh, then we uh, are also uh, mixed in is the uh, possible temporary companion Ray. Is her name Ray? What's her name again? I'm looking at her. Uh, yeah, Sarah Griffiths play, play, uh, playing Ray. Um, I, I, it, look, before on the new companion, it was clearly between a Ace and Ray. They they did the right the right choice choosing Ace, right? A, a, the Ace Doctor relationship and the and the um, realization of Ace as being uh, um, very like eight is cool, you know, hip. Uh, not like not 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 in uh, stilettos and screaming, which is kind of like the John Nathan Turner go to for for uh, for companions. Uh, they were trying something similar with with Ray, but it's weird. She she has like an Alan wrench set in a in a purse and a bunch of like she, they they have this whole bunch of stuff they put in the like she does, which is just kind of weird, right? So at the same time, we got who was it? Uh, uh, Hugh Lloyd, who is. It's weird, and I just, that's just the way. The only way to explain this weird uh, beekeeper who's got these deep insight, in, uh, you know, insights. I remember at the time somebody saying, "Wouldn't it? It made more sense if he was like a retired time lord, right? <laughs> that 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 would that would all work." Um, 
but yeah, as not, it just it was just weird, right? Just weird. Um, so uh, Ray is kind of dating this guy uh, Billy, who, who's playing in, a, who's the lead singer of the band, um, and, and Delta obviously puts some kind of mind control on him because she he becomes besotted with her. I, I like, it, it, and it just had this weird like. Uh, um, component going on that I just got this vibe like saying, as long as you do everything I say, I'm going to shag you, right? That's kind of the vibe I get coming off Delta for Billy. And Billy's like, yeah, okay, what? A anything, anything, anything for that sweet Delta and pussy. That's basically what, and, and listen, I'm not the one who wrote this, okay? This is how, this is what they put on screen. And it's weird, it's weird. There's clearly some mind control going on uh, because he, he wants to care for uh, Delta and her weird green baby, uh, <laughs> which just it just doesn't work at all. Oh, God. so many things that this doesn't work. I think the thing that doesn't work most so is the music, uh, and I remember that being such a major feature of the story. They were really excited about the movie. It was uh, what was it? So Keith uh, McClarkock who was doing the uh, incidental music. I think he did the did he do the the uh, uh, the theme tune for the for, for this season? I think so. By the way, by the way, I remember the the last uh, 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 Blu-ray box set, seven stock Blu-ray box set I looked at was season twenty six, and the title sequence completely is at odds with that season. Doesn't work at all. Here it works completely. It's like very frothy, right? And so it really, really works well. And you can you can see how they put it together. They just, they just obviously couldn't afford to do another one. Um, so. Uh, Basically, the, the rest of the story is them just running around pointlessly. Uh, uh, Mel and... Oh, there's another guy from... What was it? From Please Sir. What was his name again? Uh, I'm looking through the cl uh, the cast list. Uh, da, da, da. Richard Davis, right? He was in some big comedy uh, playing the, uh, 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 the, the chief redcoat. And again, all the performances are great, right? All the performances are good. The energy is good. The, just the story is terrible. The script is really just doesn't make sense. Like, for example, for example, it starts off the Bannermen are wiping out the Shimmerer, the D Delton people. And we just assume the, the, you know, uh, the Bannermen are bad and the Shimmerer are good, right? Why? Maybe maybe the Bannermen are bad and the Shimmer are worse. <laughs> I don't I mean, like what like I don't know. I really have no idea. Like we we're not given any context to the conflict and it doesn't make any bloody sense, right? So uh then uh, uh, the cliffhanger for part two is 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 not so great. It's uh uh um Mel and uh Burton, the guy played by the guy what was it from Please Sir, I think. Uh, uh, um, are captured by uh, the Bannerman and so the Doctor drives up on a bike and has his first big Doctor um, uh, you know uh, talk da talking down to and because it just nothing it just doesn't make sense like like why would and they, you know he takes uh, uh, Mel and Burton and leaves and he's like and they, they, they raise their guns to fire at him and the cliffhanger is like, oh, I think I might have gone down too far. Uh, and, and okay, but apparently not because they let him go. They let him go um, because yeah. So the third episode is just a disaster. So many, like, so much footage of of driving around in the countryside with really bad incidental music. But yeah, so that's the thing. The incidental music really, really doesn't work in this. Um, yeah, Keith, the problem is Keith uh, 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 McClark just really wasn't up for it. it just didn't, didn't have the talent to pull it off. And, and again, I don't want to be, a, be an, an arsehole to him, but that's really what it, he just didn't have the talent to pull this off. So Peter Davison, when he's watching it, they, they, you know, they have uh, the Dick Barton music playing at one point when because he wants to do it. They're trying to do it like in, in universe, right? So they have the Dick Barton music playing uh, and Peter Davison's like, are they taking the piss? Like, why are they doing that? It makes no sense. Right, it makes no sense. So the but the story ends up... Uh, oh, yeah, so also I think uh, uh, in episode two, you have a real big problem. You you get to meet all the people on the tour bus, all the Navarinos going on the tour bus, and you quite like them, right? They're a fun group of people. They've got a nice bus driver. Everybody likes them, right? And then the Bannermen turn up, and they just kill them in a bad explosion, a bad explosion. Uh, again, no, that's not very Doctor Who, right? You don't make you don't make characters like that to murder them for no reason, and, and it really, it really is very, very jarring, right? And that's when Mel and Burton are are, are captured. So yeah, the third ep uh, third episode, just lots of 
driving around the countryside with in a, with like poorly produced music uh um I mean, for a lot of time for no apparent reason like i kept watching and going oh you can cut that scene you can cut that scene you can cut that scene you can cut. that's why i think maybe if you uh if you if you did an amalgamated version with new, new effects you will get closer to what they really wanted to do right which is i think a bit yeah just try and get more fun doctor who going i honestly it was uh, as this is much i haven't seen it yet right I, I might try and get to it today the um uh, I think it was Del uh, not Del I think it was Dragonfire where they really finally got close to the tone they were going to. I think so. I think Sophie Alder is really, really core to creating this this version of Doctor Who. Um, fine. So the the story essentially ends that uh, 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 Billy. Oh, they they have they have these this really clunky exposition explaining how Queen Bee's. I uh, get fed royal jelly, and that's how they become queens. And oh yeah, I forgot this whole other thing. Oh my god! So the egg hatches, and it, it keeps growing into different young girls. So here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Please don't put pre pre uh, pre pubescent girls in in white spandex. It's it, if you're not a paedophile, it's a bit off putting, right? It's a bit off putting. And now in nowadays in 24, I'm watching it. I'm thinking. There's a bunch of paedophiles whacking off to this. And, and there are. There are. Uh, she keeps growing and having bad green makeup on. It's all done badly, right? Uh, uh, with very, very bad acting. Um, and, the, and so Billy finds that it takes the uh, uh, the royal jelly that Delta's been feeding the baby to make her into a, a shimmer queen. And starts taking it because he wants to become uh, a shimmer as well. Because he wants to shag Delta, right? Because he's under her hypnotic spell right that's really what's going on uh and uh, uh so um they uh uh, uh they fly off they destroy the the the, the bannerman with a really stupid in a bunch of really stupid plot things they have hugh lloyd use his ten thousand jars of honey to somehow smash on the bannerman and release bees and so they get stung a lot uh, uh i mean really it's it's, it's not good it's not good. Uh, 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 and then, uh, then they turn up and they put this cone around the TARDIS that if you step into it, you get blown up. And because they hook up Delta's kid, who has this like weird psychic scream thing she does that like melts the Bannerman's ears or something, uh, uh, they put that through a loudspeaker, all right? And they kill all of them that way, apart from Don Henson, who falls into his own trap in the TARDIS, blowing himself up. There you go. Delta and the Bannerman, essentially. And then Billy goes off into the sunset with Delta, uh, hopefully, to, to after all this, to finally get laid. Finally get laid with, with let, yeah, I, 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 hate to, I hate to be the one to point this out, to a, you know, average looking woman <laughs> average looking woman who seems to be uh, a humorless pain in the ass <laughs> that, that's basically what 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 uh, you know the the, the happy end <laughs> yeah de i do hope i do hope Bi billy got 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 a happy ending out of this and it ends up with uh, uh hugh lloyd looking up into the sky and smiling to himself weirdly again weirdly none of this stuff really makes sense uh uh but the box set's totally worth it. There's a bunch of extras on there. What 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 they have on there? That's good. You got Did you see with uh, um, uh, what's he called again? Uh, um, John Levine spitting bullets. Trouble is, he's got valid criticism. This is garbage. This is just really bad. But he's just spitting bullets of the whole JNT era, right? Uh, uh, he must be on the outs. Essentially, he's on the outs. Uh, you got a making of which is, which is, we didn't get on the DVD. It's a bog standard, you know, uh, a talking head. Uh, vaguely interesting. Uh, five one sound. Yeah, always always use that. Uh, going live with Sylvester McCoy broadcast uh, November fourteenth, nineteen eighty seven. Talks a lot more about playing Pied Piper, right? Than it, but uh, uh, um, yeah, again, I like this because it's like you're seeing a nascent uh, new Doctor Who being cre uh, created. So again, for somebody who loves Doctor Who, which I do, uh, uh, it's it's a recommend. This box set is a total recommend. Uh, uh, it's just a joy. So yeah, so the ne next disc to, to do is going to be Dragonfire. That's got the Sylvester McCoy interview with Matthew Sweet, which is freaking awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, and also my, by far my favourite story of, 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 of the era. 
uh, yeah, of the season. So uh, uh, looking forward to it. I uh, Honestly, I, I hope going to that one with an open mind won't lead me to be disappointed. Right? <laughs> cause, cause I went to these with open minds and I ended up kind of liking them more than I remember. Uh, it's nice to to reevaluate them. Uh, uh, I hope that, yeah. I, again, I hope I, I, I liked uh, uh, Dragonfire as much as I liked the first time around. Hi, my name is Ian Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!